What's up guys, it's Dave, I'm here with Foxy, filming another quick tip video for our newsletter. So with everything that's been going on in the world lately, we thought it would be a good idea to give you guys some quick tips on what you could be doing indoors to keep your dog occupied, to keep them mentally stimulated, keep them fulfilled, and keep them balanced, all right? Uh, so this is Foxy here. She's our latest puppy enrichment program client. Uh, she'll be with us for the next month or so, you know, uh, learning all the basics from us, how to kind of interact with the world around her um, in a balanced way, in a calm way. Uh, and then she'll be with the other dogs and stuff as that goes on as well. So she'll get a nice, good kind of basic understanding of how the world works and her place in it. Um, so it's really good for her. She's been really great. She's a really calm girl, uh, really good energy, really fun to have around. So the first thing I want to talk to you guys about is treadmill. Uh, we have a lot of videos on treadmill. We've, you can see, you know, we've done it in the past in our stories and everything else, so the dogs that work on treadmill. Uh, the thing I want to start by saying with that is that the treadmill is never going to replace your walk, okay? The walk outside with your dog is the most kind of beneficial thing you can do building relationship with your dog and really kind of teaching them what their place in the world is and all that kind of stuff. But in the, in the event of uh, pandemic virus or raining or snowing outside or stuff like that, uh, the treadmill is a good kind of alternative or supplementary exercise you can give your dog. Um, you know, a lot of that's done by finding out what motivates your dog and using that to kind of get them on the treadmill, get them comfortable with it first. Um, and then when you finally do turn the treadmill on, you know, keeping them in a happy-go-lucky, you know, staying calm if they are to panic, because think about it, right? For a dog to be kind of like, for her to be sitting here and all of a sudden this table starts moving, that naturally for us it's like if an earthquake happens you know so there might naturally be a little bit of panic when you first introduce your dog to the treadmill so you know you want to stay calm yourself let them ride that wave for a minute until they realize oh nothing bad happens i can just walk on this thing that's really the main kind of thing going into treadmill um but yeah so if, if you have a treadmill at home uh we have a lot of videos coming and stuff like that um on step by step how to really kind of introduce your dog to a treadmill and I really recommend you guys do that because it can be a really good tool for you guys who can't really get out and exercise their dog every day you know lately um, or if it's just you know like I said a supplementary thing for your dog's routine to kind of give them that little bit of exercise that they might need right so that's treadmill uh, the second thing I want to talk about is uh, place command so it's another thing we've been putting in our videos a lot so for those of you who are unfamiliar Place command is a, a thing we use with dogs where they can be sent to an area, it's usually like a little raised bed that we have, like little raised cots. Um, so their job is to be sent to this area and they're gonna stay there until the human lets them off, okay? So this allows them to practice impulse control, allows them to practice calmness again, which is like the overlying one, allows them to pr uh, practice distance for you. So for those of you who um, struggle with separation anxiety with your dogs, this is a good one for you to practice inside the home starting today you know set up a bed for them send them to bed um, and if they try to get off send them back again you know there's also a, you know like i said videos coming on how to do these things step by step um, but this is a good one for them to practice you know because think about it if you are someone who struggles with separation separation anxiety with your dog um, but your dog can't spend five minutes in the house with you without being by your side Think of, you know, how, how are you gonna handle being alone when you guys leave the house and stuff like that. So place is a good command where, like I said, again, you, you send a dog to this specific area with a boundary on it that they understand, okay, I'm not supposed to leave this area until my human says so. So then, you know, you start working with that, you know, give them, you know, keep them on there, take them off, but only when you let them, and then it can, be a, it can build into a thing where you keep them on there and you walk away and you stay there for 30 seconds and then you come back and say, good job, kind of thing like that. So let them practice being at a distance from you. Let them practice being stationary in this one place and you know, bring them off when they're relaxed, you know, kind of thing. So they start to associate, oh, when I'm on this bed, when I'm on this place, my, my kind of go-to thing is just to relax and then I can get, get back off and rejoin. Right, Foxy? You're doing very well, thank you. All right, next one, nose work. Uh, it's a pretty good one. There's a lot of different ways you can use nose work in the house. Um, common one that we like to do, we play find it. It's like a little game we play. So we'll hide, we'll hide treats, so a little like things that smell good, very pungent are best for this, obviously. Um, we'll hide them in different areas of the house, right? And then we'll bring the dog around and say, okay, go find it. And they're encouraged to use their nose. So thinking how a dog sees the world, 60% of a dog's brain is gonna be triggered through their nose, right? So they interact with the world around them by smelling things, okay? So using, you know, the find it game or whatever in the house is a good way for them to kind of just healthily use the nose and practice using it, practice finding things, 
practice them being inquisitive about things with their nose and rather than being inquisitive or with their eyes or with their ears or stuff like that, you know, teach them how to, or, you know, and that's the thing too, you don't have to use treats, you know, you could use yourself. So if it's you and your wife at home or you and your husband, your kids, whoever, have one person with the dog in one room, right? And have say, you know, little Jimmy. Say, go Jimmy, go hide somewhere. So maybe he goes in the closet and he goes in there, he doesn't say a word, right? The dog's gonna say, and you, know, you tell your dog, hey, go find Jimmy. And they're gonna smell the ground, see where they went, see where his, they're gonna smell his feet on the ground, where they go, and they're gonna go to the closet. And then, you know, when they find him, it's big reward, big play, job well done, you know? Let your dog know when, you're, when they've done a good job. Another easy one you guys can practice inside is thresholds, right? So you always see us doing it, every kind of doorway, every kind of entryway to a new area. Uh, you're gonna have, you wanna have your dog practice calmness and practice following, right? So typically what people do is, you know, or what we see a lot of people do is you open a door, dog rushes right in, and now they're in this new space leading ahead of you and they're excited, right? So you wanna reverse that and practice this, you know, in your home normally anyway. But you know, have the door, you have your little dog here. So say we're opening a door here, I would have her sit. Very nice. Door would open in front of her. I'm gonna be here between her and the door just to block her if she decides to make an attempt, waiting for the eye contact. And when she gives it to me, then I lead first into the room, walk in first, and then she follows. And then now her association is, I entered this room calm and I entered this room following. So that becomes you know, kind of their, their default experience when they're in this new area. Good girl. Another thing you could think about doing when you're you know, in the house during these times is changing up the feeding ritual, right? Um, so we get a lot of calls about, yeah, it's a good girl, she's chewing on the leash. Here, why don't you chew on this? Nice big donut. Good girl. Uh, so change up your feeding ritual, right? Um, so lots of people, what we, what we see a lot of is, you know, say, okay, you hungry? You want to eat? And they get this whole big excitement thing going, and then they mix the food up, the dog's at their feet, you know, kind of doing this whole thing. Put the bowl down, chomp, 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 right? So we have plenty of time now alone in our homes with our dogs, our families and stuff. So there's no better time to kind of practice calming the whole food ritual down. So try it this way, right? Don't say anything when you're gonna get the food. Don't activate the kind of excitement by saying all those things. Instead, calmly just prepare the bowl and then wait, right? So see, see how long it takes your dog to kind of calm down if you do have an excited eater. Um, so in, instead of kind of like putting the bowl down and then asking your dog to wait at a distance, try having them just kind of sit, be calm about it, prepare your, your dog's food, have them sit somewhere and have the bowl. Kind of just wait for a while until they relax. Don't let them invade your space. Don't let them in invade the food. Just kind of keep them at a distance and ask them for calmness, right? When they kind of go all the way down, relax, and they kind of just give in to the whole thing, present the food to them there, right? So you're not saying, okay, so that which, Lots of dogs too, when they have them, they're waiting calm and they've kind of got it. Then you go, okay, they go, and they kind of snap out of the calmness and go back to excitement to the food. So instead of that, try taking the food and bringing it to the calm mind instead of sending the calm mind to excitement towards the food. Try that, see how that works. Because that's the thing, like it's not about really what the body's doing. You know, it's, it's one thing if my dog is sitting, but it's another thing if my dog is sitting like this versus just sitting. You know, we want the dogs just kind of sitting, calmness, you know, they get paid with their food in that state of mind, okay? Excellent. Next thing, fun stuff kind of thing, you know, just practice basic obedience with the dog. You know, use the food if that's what motivates them. Practice things like sit, stay, you know, lay down, come, you know, wait, all those kind of things. It sounds silly, you know, but like just freshening up on that stuff inside the home uh, we'll just make, you know, practice on relationship building, all that kind of stuff, and it's just fun for your dog. Another thing to talk about is play with dogs. So like right now here, Foxy's chewing on a rope. A second ago, she was chewing on the leash, so I kind of waited there, held it until she dropped it, and then introduced something else for her to chew on. Um, so that's the thing I wanna talk about, is putting limitations on play, right? So a big one that people do is when they play tug with their dog, they get them all riled up, and, rah, 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 rah. and then they kind of either, either the dog gets it, so they got rewarded for being in that kind of competitive, kind of high stakes mode. So we're gonna put a limitation on it, right? So she's right here, she's kind of biting my, kind of like, she's so young still and she's kind of learning what she can and cannot put her mouth on. So right there, kind of chewing on my shirt. Good. Whenever she gives up to me, all the pressure comes off there. And then you get the rope. You get the nice fun rope. She's playing with the leash. She's playing with my arm and stuff. She doesn't know yet that these aren't things that, you know, we're not gonna allow for her. So we're just, everything with this girl is a new experience, right? 
So when she chews a leash, I disagree by just kind of saying, oop, you know, don't do that. And then when she listens and she's like, oh, you don't want me to do that? And say, yes, but, so here we go again, right? Good, she didn't go for it that time. So then, ooh, it's a nice bit of rope. It's fun. This is the fun toy, yes. And just kind of encourage her to play with the rope instead of her leash or instead of my arm kind of thing. Block what you don't want, encourage what you do want. So that play starts when you say it does, you put limitations on how hard you want to play and what they are, what they can and cannot do, what you are going to allow them to do. And then back to calmness when you're done, right? So like you, you decide when the play starts, how the play is, and then when the play is over, and then it begins and ends with calmness. So right from here, so a quick demonstration, right from here, she's calm. Thank you, get the eye contact, get the play, get the play. Sit on the table. Or you're not interested, and that's fine too. Let's with this one. Let's do this. Get it, get it, good girl, good girl. Bring a little bit of excitement, and then. All good, not interested. Very nice, Foxy. You can pay that little bit with calmness, good. Calm affection. So again, starts with calmness, you initiate, you, you, you kind of like audit how the play is gonna go, and then on your terms you end, and then back to calmness. Very nice, you're a good girl. All right, so and after all that's done, you know, we've given you a list of kind of things you can go through, things to think about and how to kind of engage with your dog and keep them fulfilled, keep them stimulated during all this kind of like slow down quarantine time. And at the very end of it, we're gonna talk about affection, okay? Um, so the same thing like with the play, the human, we want the human to decide when the affection starts and when it ends and what it, and keep in mind like what, what your dog is getting out of the affection, right? So if I'm just doing this and Foxy's kind of just like in a really calm kind of state right now too, so this is good for her, right? So right now what I'm reinforcing is just kind of like the calm state of mind, right? You get what you pet, keep that in mind. All right, so especially with a dog like this, who's so young and still like kind of like learning her way around the world, we want to give. We want to be giving affection when she's either calm or when she's following, right? So if I'm giving affection to an excited mind, I'm going to be fostering an excited mind, right? And those are the minds that are going to get into things, look for things, you know, be destructive, that stuff like that. So from the very beginning with this girl, we're just fostering calmness, right? Petting calmness, we're talking to calmness, right? You're very sweet. Good. And we're just generally agreeing with calmness through our affection, through our attention, and things like that, right? And again, just like before. Uh, affection begins and ends on your terms, right? Good. All right, so that's kind of it, guys. That's a few quick tips on what you can be doing inside uh, with your dog under quarantine or just in the rain while it's raining or snowing or anything else outside. Stay tuned because we're gonna be making a lot of detailed videos, like step-by-step -step guides, really, on how to do a lot of these things um, and with specific dogs, too, like what to look at. Oh, what happened? Nothing? You wanna get down? So stay tuned guys, because we're gonna have a lot of videos coming out in the near future on kind of like step-by-step -step basis on how to do a lot of these things. Um, like, you know, what type of dog you have, what kind of strategy would be good, you know, how to deal with a nervous dog on treadmill versus, you know, a very confident dog teaching him treadmill, stuff like that. Very good girl, thank you. Again, just kind of fostering the kindness. I said kindness again, didn't I? Just fostering calmness here, yes. We like that, we don't like that. No. Thank you. Thank you. She's a very good girl. So sweet. All right, guys. That's basically the gist of it. Uh, stay calm, stay confident, stay healthy, and stay connected during these times, all right? It's really important um, that we support each other and we support each other with calmness and understanding, all right? Love you guys. Thank you. Take care. What happened? Thank you. I'm going to take you, and we're going to go over there. Take your toys, too.